Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Hey y'all. Um, um, Stacy, you want to see what a suppressed video looks like? A suppressed video, okay. This is the video we did uh, day before yesterday on the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, you see down here in the gray where a normal video of mine would track. Right. But you see, when a, we do a video that's particularly interesting, it gets a jump. As it hits the YouTube algorithm. Mm -hmm. But then you notice when so many people start seeing the video, then all of a sudden it stops. Right. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, it's because it's being suppressed. Mm. Okay. And that means that YouTube is not allowing people to see it. Yeah, it actually means that I'm actually doing a good job. <laughs> because, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, being for real, mm -hmm. you know, if, whenever I am doing a video, that is actually significant and really means anything. This is exactly what's going to happen. It's yeah. going to be suppressed mm -hmm. by YouTube. TikTok does the same thing. Instagram, all of them do this. Mm -hmm. Where they go in and put the car bosh on the video. Making sure that people don't get the chance to see it and get this information. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this video right here could be along the same lines as we talk about the name of our Messiah. Okay. The actual name of our Messiah is something they also don't want you to know the name. Yeah, because um, that name is very important. Absolutely. And they are keeping it hidden from us, making sure we don't know that name, even got us calling the name of their pagan gods in its place. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, in today's video, we're going to explore what exactly his name is using verses from the Old Testament. Okay. But let's start over here in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. All if, right. If you would, would you go ahead and read that? Okay. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So it says here that his name is Emmanuel. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, does that sound like a Hebrew name to you? Emmanuel, the L, but... Other than that, it does not. And that's a very good point. That's going to come up here in this class. But what we want to do is explore this name, Emmanuel. Okay, because I've, I've heard um, it being used a lot, especially around the holiday of Christmas. Right. Now, where they're getting this from is Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Okay. This is actually where they get the word. Emmanuel. Emmanuel from. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and read it? Okay. Isaiah 17 and 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay. Which is pretty close to Emmanuel. Right. Mm -hmm. But now what's interesting is when we come over and we look at his name in the interlinear Bible. Mm-hmm. You see the Hebrew text there mm -hmm. when you see the word Emmanuel, mm -hmm. but notice how it's spelled there, but it also has this additional word over here. Now, what does that look like? Emmanuel. But you see, there is no Strong's number associated with that right. and even no words here. So it's kind of like they just added that part in there. Mm -hmm. But when you look at what Emmanuel comes from, it comes from these two letters here, right? Mm -hmm. which a lot of people refer to as L. But when you dig a little bit deeper in here and you go in and you actually look at what's in the concordance for Isaiah 7 and 14, you don't see that other word at all. All you really see is the Hebrew letters for his name. Right. Mm hmm. And then when you come over and you look at the Hebrew, I found this website over here at HebrewWorldTestament.com where it shows you the English, but then it also shows you the Hebrew and both the modern Hebrew as well as the Paleo Hebrew. Mm -hmm. But notice how it's written in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You don't see that Emmanuel there at all. Right. All you really see there are the two letters. Mm -hmm. And so let's go look and see what these two letters are. You have the first letter, which is the Aleph. Right. And then you have the second letter, which is Lamed. Mm -hmm. So Emmanuel is not actually the name that the Old Testament is pointing to, but is actually just pointing to these two letters. Right. The thing about it, when you pronounce those two letters, 
One has the sound of the A and the other has the sound of the L. You get the word Allah. Mm. Which for some, that name is actually going to ring out because they've heard that word a lot. The word Allah. Yeah, in the Muslim religion, they use the name Allah. Absolutely. And we're going to get to that in a second. But notice how the transliteration for the word is just L. Mm -hmm. That's because they're leaving out that first letter and just pronouncing the sound of the Lamed. So they're just saying L. And they even added this in the meanings of these letters where you see that they're saying that the LF is silent. Right. So instead of saying Allah, many people just say L. Mm. Like when you hear them saying the Shema, you hear them saying our L is one L or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's where they're getting that from. These two letters leaving out or making silent the first letter. The Aleph. But we know that this is actually incorrect when we see the word Abba, like we see over in Romans chapter 8 and in Galatians chapter 4. We see that word Abba refers to our Father. Right. It's actually Strong's number one. It's the first word mm -hmm. in the concordance. And you see, it has the first letter of Aleph followed by the next letter, which is Beth. Mm -hmm. But you pronounce it Abba when we see it in the New Testament. So that proves that the Aleph is not silent. Right. It's actually pronounced. Or you wouldn't get the word Abba. It would just be Ba. Right. So when we're looking at this word here, the word is actually Allah. Hmm. Emmanuel. When we see in the New Testament where it says Emmanuel, when you pull the strings in the Old Testament, you see that it's actually pointing to Allah. Mm. Okay. In other words, when you hear the Muslims using the word Allah, they're actually referring to our Messiah. Mm. Every time they say Allah, every time they're talking about Allah, they're not referring to God in general as they would have us to think or their own God that they've created or something like that, they're actually pointing to the our, Messiah. To the Messiah. Mm -hmm. their, their Allah and our Messiah are the exact same thing. Okay. Are the exact same entity, are the exact same being. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you look over in the Quran, you see those two letters written often. All throughout the Quran, you see the word... What we would normally pronounce as Emmanuel. Or um, El. Mm-hmm. It is indicated as they would read it as Allah. They're they're reading it as Allah, but like you say, we're reading it as El or Emmanuel, or in the New Testament, we're reading him as our Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. Or Yasin. Mm. In fact, when we go over here to Google and ask where is this word coming from, we see that it says clearly here that. The name origin can be traced to the earliest Semitic writings in which the word for God is Il or El hmm. or Eloah, the latter two used in a Hebrew Bible. Hmm. So Allah is our Messiah. Hmm. So do they know this? No, I don't think anybody knows this, you know, and... This is why I'm saying that this video will hit the suppressed list is because they actually don't want you to notice. They want you to believe that our Muslim brothers are in error. Mm -hmm. And they also don't want you to understand what the true name of the Messiah is. They don't want you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so they come up with all kinds of other transliterations. Like in this comment here that actually prompted me to do this video. Okay. They're getting away from the true word. And like I said, they're using transliterations or, in other words, people are just making up names. Mm, okay. And one of the reasons why they're making up names is because they're actually suppressing the real name. They don't want you to know what his name is in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's because they want you to think that our Muslim brothers don't know what they're talking about and get, or give any credit to their religion at all. Right. And I'm not saying that their religion is right. I believe all religion is wrong. Mm -hmm. Any, any, No matter what religion you're in, you should be separating yourself from that religion. But facts are facts. Right. Mm -hmm. this, I mean, we can't get away from the truth. 
especially when we're digging in the Bible and looking for it, it's going to be spelled out for us. Mm -hmm. And so here we see what his name truly is. So what do you think? You think this video will hit the suppress list? I think there's a lot of uh, needful information in this video. I hope it does not hit the suppress list. Um, I know many of, well, I'm going to say some of your videos have. And I just hope that this one is is not because his name is important. Yeah, well, only the most important ones do they do this. You know, if I make up a video, if I create a video that has errors in it or it's unimportant, just, you know, f a fluff video or a lukewarm video or anything like that, they won't touch it. But if it's a video that's pertinent to our salvation, if it's something that we need to understand in order to move forward, yeah, they, they'll actually block it because they actually are setting people up, one to turn them over to the beast here in the end times. And one sure way to get that done is to make you not understand what our Messiah is, even have you calling him by some other name. Yeah, it's amazing how we all have been trained to call him the J-E-S-U-S -S name. But when we try to discover and understand his true name, it's just a lot of chaos that's presented before us. Absolutely. And guys, when y'all see these videos, I'll be trying to give hints on some of these videos by posting them in my community that these videos are being suppressed. Y'all help us out. Go in and share these videos. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all we can really do. They're trying to keep them from our brothers. They're trying to keep them from our children. They're trying to keep this information from our loved ones. So let's do our part by hitting the like button, by sharing the video, and by leaving a comment. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate you guys doing that down in this video. And I'll look for you in the comment section. So what you're saying is Allah is one of the Messiah's names. It's definitely one of his. Is actually who you're saying when you say the word Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. You're actually saying Allah. You're mm -hmm. referring to Allah. Mm -hmm. But now the Greek actually has a different name too. And we'll add that to this video. When you look at verse 25 of chapter 1 in the book of Matthew, you see something strange about his name there. See how it's in all caps? Right. When you look back at verse 1, it's not in all caps. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It has the capital J and then the other letters are lowercase. Right. But you see like in verse 21, his name is... In small caps and then when you see it there in 25 is also in small caps or all capital letters right. mm -hmm. and the difference is is because they're talking about what his name is actually called the other times in chapter 1 is just talking about his genealogy and talking about him but when you look in 21 it says it's talking about how the angels are commanding them on what they shall name him and then down there in 25, you see what they actually named him. You see that they spell his name in all caps. Mm -hmm. Well, when we come over to the Interlinear Bible, we see a difference. There you see it in verse 25. The Greek name ends with the N. Right. It starts with the yay sound with the S in the middle. So it's like yay son. But then when you come back up in verse one, you don't see the N at the end. Right. And then like in verse 16, where it's talking about when he was born, you mm -hmm. see it there in lowercase letters. Yes. There in that verse, you see they actually added an S at the end, making this oof sound at the end. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where they get their pagan God. That's how they slid their pagan God name into his name, mm -hmm. actually changed his name mm -hmm. into the pagan God, putting this oof because 90% of the time when you see this word J-E-S in the Bible, the transliteration is going to end in this oos sound. And matter of fact, when you look at this verse, which we know as part of the Romans road to salvation, mm -hmm. look at what it says there in verse nine. Okay. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But then when we come over in the interlinear Bible, look at how it is. Is actually this word here, right. Yah Son. Mm -hmm. So it's saying that's the only name in which we can be saved. And praise our Father in heaven, they attempted to give us the correct name there, mm -hmm. letting us know that it's not that oos sound, that right. oos guy. Mm -hmm. And 
This is the name that I actually use. You probably have never heard me refer to him as Allah before and may never hear me refer to him as Allah except in this video, but you will often hear me refer to him in this name here, which is pronounced Yasun. Right. Mm -hmm. Which sounds like Yah's son. It does. Or our father's son. It does. But either way, we know that the name that they tell us to call him is the only name that's actually incorrect. There's several names we can call him, even some of those transliterations over there. But we know that his true name is being suppressed and the one name that they're giving us is actually wrong. Right. It's, and, the, it's a false name representing a false God. And they don't want us to know this because they want us to keep calling on this false God in our prayers and everything else we do. When we're in trouble, they want us calling on the name of their God instead of calling on the name of our Messiah. That is, and I don't know what word I want to use. I want to say trifling. Treacherous. Treacherous. That yes. the Bible uses treacherous. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the words we were talking about in that other video. Like it says down there in Isaiah chapter 24, these treacherous dealers are dealing treacherously. They're dealing out this false God mm -hmm. and this is why they'll be getting that particular Christmas gift that we talked about in that other video right mm -hmm. so what it boils down to is that in the New Testament our Messiah's name is Yasan but when pointing to the Old Testament his name is more like Allah and I know this is very controversial guys I know a lot of you are actually going to get upset about this but when you think about it, that's actually part of my job. Like our Messiah said, he didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. In other words, he didn't come to pacify us and make us feel good about what we think and believe, but to actually bring controversy so that we can dig down to the truth. Those that are not being controversial in this time is who I believe is being described over in Revelation chapter 3 and 16 as being lukewarm. But it's topics like this, the reason why they do so. This is why your preachers lie to you. It's because when they come with a controversial subject like this, there will be people who will get emotionally disturbed because it's not what they understand. But you got to realize, and this is just a good example, that a lot of what you understand, you learned from people who didn't use scripture to tell you. Somebody gave you a transliteration whether it's Yahshua or any other transliteration, all they did was convince you, but they didn't use scripture to do so because the word Yeshua referring to our Messiah is not in scripture anywhere. And I say that again, our Messiah's name being Yeshua is not in the Bible. It's not scriptural. It's what they call a transliteration, a derivative. Somebody came up with the idea that Yeshua means Yah saves, and so they assigned it to his name. And those people in the comment section who are going to use their emotion to try to convince me and you and everybody else, all they did was believe the person that was telling them that. They were convinced. And now that the scripture is presented to them and they see a contradiction, they're actually going to lean on their own understanding, saying that the scripture is not correct. This is why the 144,000 will all be virgins. They didn't spend many years sitting under teachers who were making up stuff and now have to be convinced of the truth. They haven't sat in these schools of false doctrine. And now you have to remove this false doctrine out of them. With a hammer and chisel, it seems like. So I challenge those in the comment section who want to come and emphatically try to say, some in all caps, that his name is Yeshua or some other word. I say, show me a verse. Put the scripture there. In this video, I've given you the verses and I've shown you the scripture to back up what I'm saying. I didn't use emotion or even my opinion. Do you think I like the idea that our Messiah's name is Allah? No more than you do. But facts are facts. 
And just because there's hundreds, thousands, even millions of people who don't let facts get in the way of their good story, that's not the case over here. I understand those same people are the ones that tell us that you don't need the law, you don't need the feast days, you don't need to keep the Sabbath days and all of that stuff because they were convinced by some of the same people of these transliterations that they're using. In other words, these people spent too much time down at the church and not enough time reading the scripture. And now that the scripture is presented to them, they're discounting it and those that are teaching it, relying on what they've learned from those who actually dwell in the church of Laodicea. So I'll be looking for you down in the comment section, but I'll also be looking for the scripture to back up what you say. And if I need to do a correction, I'll make another video on it. Else, if I don't see the scripture attached to your transliteration, I'm just going to ignore you. So you guys go over and check out that video. I'll give you a link to it here and I'll see you in the comment section. Yeah, we'll see you in the comment section. Shalom.